Hello viewers, this is the national news on Star Television on Channel 21. I am Yesi Ernest Hallowell. First, I bring you the headlines. The International Labour Organization has called on journalists to report on the stories of the organization as a way to bring their activities to the public. What we are not saying is we are not telling the story in terms of the changes that are beginning to happen in people's lives. This is why we said, can we meet with our media houses? The Embassy of Saudi Arabia in Sierra Leone on Monday, 23rd September, highlighted their shared commitment to the government of Sierra Leone. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has provided Hajj scholarship to host 100 Sierra Leonean pilgrims to perform Hajj ritual for the coming year 1446 as part of its efforts to, t to stand up with its brothers and friends in terms of hardship and difficulties, circumstances, the kingdom pro provided financial grant estimate at about $35 million to combat the Ebola epidemic in Sierra Leone and neighboring countries. And the Sierra Leone Association of Women in Journalism have officially held their first annual general meeting. We want to take the opportunity to reflect on challenges and opportunities facing women in journalism today. Although the number of women practicing journalism today has been encouraging, as small young women enter the field, we must also pay attention to the good number of good women journalists who keep living. Welcome back now for the news in detail. The International Labour Organization has called on journalists and editors to report on stories of the organization as a way to bring their activities to the public. Janet Muvezaiza tells us more. The European Union's support for the Opportunity Salon project is a beacon of hope for the future of journalism in Sierra Leone. This initiative aimed at creating opportunities and decent jobs for citizens has the potential to significantly improve the business environment and foster entrepreneurship development. This meeting that was held with the Chief Technical Advisor Opportunity Salon, Tondeya Manoto, emphasized the need for such a meeting as he says the excellent talents and stories in Sierra Leone have not been told exceptionally by all of us, which everyone should take responsibility for. He continued to say that this is why the media is engaged with this and to tell unique stories of innovative Sierra Leoneans breaking barriers. As a journalist made suggestion, he concluded by saying that the resolution and agreements with the fourth estate will be considered and that he looks forward to working and having great success with the media landscape in Sierra Leone. But what we are not saying is we are not telling the story in terms of the changes that are beginning to happen in people's lives. This is why we said, can we meet with our media houses and talk about this and say, we, we could actually tell our story from a human centered angle and 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 document so that we can inspire others to do the same or do better or different but everyone needs to see that the opportunities are out there but inherently Sierra Leoneans have it in there to succeed and that's the story I'd like to see being put out there. For Star TV News in Freetown, Chatu Janet Mugweza is a reporting. Marking the 94th National Day celebrations of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the Embassy of Saudi Arabia in Sierra Leone on Monday, 23rd September 2024, shared their commitments to the government of Sierra Leone at an event held at the Bintumani International Conference Center in Freetown. Adonis Francis reports. In the early 1700s, a Muslim scholar named Mohammed bin Abdul Wahab 
began calling for a return to the true version of Islam. He and Mohammed bin Suad eventually formed an alliance establishing the first Saudi state ruling over what became known as al Naj, which included Mecca and Medina. After a war with the Uthmans, al Saud regained lost territory and established Riyadh as their capital before more clashes with the Uthmans in 1865. Abdurrahman al Suad, who ruled at the time, sought refuge with the local Bedouin in the desert of the empty Qatar. His son, Abdulaziz, would capture Riyadh, leading the information of the modern Saudi state. On September 23, 1932, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was established with Arabic as its national language and the Quran as its constitution. In his statement, Ali El Haji charged the affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to Sierra Leone, highlighted some of the bilateral benefits between Sierra Leone and Saudi Arabia, thereby disclosing plans underway for the two countries. In the area of Hajj, the Kingdom makes every effort to serve the guest of Allah, and it's a great honor and responsibility that it has taken upon itself. To approve, best, to, uh, to approve best services and to the gift of Allah so they can perform their Hajj ritual with ease and tranquility. In the regards, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has provided Hajj scholarship to host 100 Sierra Leonean pilgrims to perform Hajj ritual for the coming year 1446 as part of its efforts to, t to stand up with its brothers and friends in terms of hardship and difficulties, circumstances. The kingdom pro provided financial grant estimate at about $35 million to combat the Ebola epidemic in Sierra Leone and neighboring countries. On our part, the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Mrs. Frances Al-Ghali thanked and appreciated the king and the people of Saudi Arabia for upholding the core values of bilateral and diplomatic relationship between the two nations. Also, on behalf of the government and people of the Republic of Sierra Leone, express our thanks and appreciation for the invaluable support of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia with regards to your commitment in facilitating the Hajj and ensuring a safe and fulfilling experience from pilgrims. Your efforts is truly command, commendable. Let me also thank you for your efforts in providing scholarships. This has not only made the Hajj accessible to those who may have otherwise not been able to afford it, but have also fostered a sense of unity among the Muslims in the country. This noble gesture has enabled countless individuals from all corners of the country to fulfill their spiritual aspirations and embark on a journey of profound religious significance. The guest of honor for this year's 94th National Day celebration of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Mohammed Jure Jalla, the Vice President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, thanked the people of Saudi Arabia for their continued support to Sierra Leone. However, the Vice President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Dr. Mohamed Jude Jalo, on behalf of President Dr. Julius Madabio and the people of Sierra Leone, pledged their unwavering commitment for a continuous bilateral relationship between the two countries. On behalf of His Excellency, the President Dr. Julius Madabio and the King and Custodian of the two Holy Mosques, King Salman, the government, the people of Sierra Leone, and also the people of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we are going to proceed to cut this cake on this very important day. And on that note, for Star News, Adonis Francis. The Sierra Leone Association of Women in Journalism on Monday, 30th September 2024, officially held their first annual general meeting. Janet Mubezaiza reports.
The first annual general meeting is a momentous occasion in the history of the Sierra Leone women in journalism Slawij, marking the culmination of its study of operation and underscoring its growth and development. The AGM is centered around adopting appropriate resolutions, reviewing the company's provisions, engaging in panel discussions, a question and answer segment, and electing new executives. Two members, Millicent Kagbo and Hannah K. Williams, we are nominated for presidency. Melissa Kagbo emerged as the winner with 34 votes. Amina Tafinda Masako, director of programs, ran unopposed. Abiba Tukamara was elected as the director of finance. Mata Kagbo as the director of public relations. And the regional coordinators were also elected. When speaking, the executive president, who was officially elected by members in her statement, started by saying that this is the time to reflect on women's challenges and opportunities in journalism today. Although the number of women practicing journalism today has been encouraging, as more and more young women enter the field, we must also pay attention to the good number of women journalists who keep leaving. Many leave to seek new opportunities because the media landscape remains very challenging with few opportunities for growth and development for women, she said. According to her, this is a momentous event of the association. In this first annual general meeting, we want to take the opportunity to reflect on challenges and opportunities facing women in journalism today. Although the number of women Practicing journalism today has been encouraging as more young women enter the field. We must also pay attention to the good number of good women journalists who keep living. Many need to see new opportunities because the media landscape is very challenging with few opportunities for growth and development for women. The number of women in leadership positions is extremely small and unfair. And as the few who have since managed to make their way to leadership roles get stuck in the few positions available. Why we do not suggest that women be handed positions based on affirmative national law? We strongly believe the reforms are needed to create an enabling media environment that supports women to thrive. As we reflect on the challenges, we cannot ignore the appalling conditions that many of our women colleagues work in. We also cannot ignore the horrific stories of sexual harassment and abuse that women suffer in the line of their journalistic duties. These are difficult conversations that we in the media community need to be prepared to have. The event's keynote speaker, Professor Miriam Conte Morgan, Deputy Vice Chancellor Ipam, delivered a thought provoking speech on the three V's voice visibility and viability her emphasis on the need for women in journalism to amplify voices and visibility resonates with the audience what we gain together is what matters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what we gain together is what matters mm -hmm. what we so our hope and dream as an association of women in journalism. Do not become the story. You make the story. Create a better future. The event concluded with a jubilant celebration among the members who expressed their satisfaction with the transparency and fairness of the election process and the promising outcome of the results. For Star TV News in Freetown, Chatu Janet Mugbeziza reporting. The Pentecostal Fellowship of Sierra Leone has held their first annual general meeting with a the theme, Establishing Apostolic Foundations for National Cohesion and Development. This was held at the Bethel Temple International Ministries at Tower Hill in Freetown. Admire Samai tells us more. The Pentecostal Fellowship Sierra Leone, who is the mouthpiece for the Pentecostal movement in Sierra Leone, which believe that the Holy Bible is the word of the living God, and encourage on in that propagation of the gospel, we strengthen and build the body and stand with each other. Celebrating their first annual general meeting, the President's Bishop Akintayo Sam Jolie 
In his address, explained the success and challenges of the four years plan under the seven pillars of his tenure. To serve as the mouthpiece of the coastal movement in Sierra for reflecting sound and fundamental views based upon beliefs and truths and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. To set up scriptural standards, doctrines, and code of ethics to which members must conform. Along with my executive, we were voted into various offices of the National Executive Committee on the 6th of October 2020. Our official operations commenced in December of 2020. The newly elected officers were inaugurated on the 17th of January 2021 in an August 7th that was created with the presence of a wide range of ministers and distinguished personalities, with the first gentleman of the nation, His Excellency Lieutenant Brigadier Dr. Josephine Bio, himself being in personal attendance. The Commissioner for the Electoral Commission, Sierra Leone, Mohamed Kone, while delivering his fraternal greeting, said he is very honored to be invited by the distinguished Christian body. He noted that Sierra Leone should serve as a beacon to the world, a shining example of love, harmony, and peaceful cohesion among people. He explained further on the team establishing apostolic foundations for kingdom and national cohesion and development. Delivering his keynote address, Bishop Abu Koroma thanked and appreciated the executive of the Pentecostal Fellowship Sierra Leone, which he applauded them for taking the fellowship to another level. Admire some my reporting for Star TV News. Well, viewers, if you've just joined us, this is the national news on Star Television on Channel 21. The National Protected Area Authority, NPAA, under the leadership of its executive director, Thomas Faya Kamara, has taken a stance against illegal mining activities at Lake Sonfon in the Koinodogo district. The peaceful and serene beauty of Lake Sonfon a globally recognized heritage site
has been marred by destructive actions of illegal miners. George Elliot Sam tells us more. The National Protected Air Authority, under the leadership of its executive director, Thomas Faya Kamara, has taken a stand against illegal mining activities at Lake Sanfo in the Kwenadogo district. The peaceful and serene beauty of Lake Sanfo, a globally recognized heritage site, has been mirrored by the destructive action of illegal miners. In a swift and decisive move, a team led by Thomas Faya Kamara raided the illegal mining site and put a stop to all illegal activities that have been causing irreparable damage to the natural environment, expressing his profound concern over the degradation of Lake Sanfo. The executive director, Thomas Faya Kamara, stressed the importance of protecting this invaluable natural resource for future generations to come. He further that Lake Sanfo, located in the prestige Koenadugo district, is not only a sacred site for local communities, but also a biodiversity hotspot that supports a wide range of plants and animal species. The illegal mining activities, according to him, have not only polluted waters of the lake, but have also destroyed the habit of various endangered species. He reaffirmed that the National Protected Area Authority is committed to taking all necessary measures to ensure the protection and conservation of Lake Sanfo and other natural heritage sites in the country. The raid, according to Director Thomas Faya Kamara on the illegal mining site, is just the beginning of their effort to safeguard the precious natural resources and to hold accountable those who violate the laws meant to protect them. NPAA will follow and deliver on that. The vision of the president is to make sure we have sustainable um, management of our resources and our environment. So we are just going to deliver on that mandate. Being the leader, we have not been sleeping. We have been working. There are a lot of goals NPA have scored within this period to make sure the narrative changes as per what people had previously um, got within themselves as NPAA is that ne just negative perception. But thank God the perception is now changing and we'll settle for that. Executive Director Thomas Faya Kamara called upon all stakeholders, including local communities, government agencies, and international partners to join hands in the fight against illegal mining and other activities that pose a threat to the environment. Together, he said, we can ensure that Lake Sanfo and other protected areas remain striving ecosystems that benefit both people and nature. It's like we say that the president again passion for the environment. We agree, yes, things are hard. Uh, governments have they go to financial challenges, this, that. But I tell God, thank you. As I talk to you now, we don't able to forget we um, support who can get from government. In fact, that don't make sense now. This long uh, uh, um, delay, uh, well, visit in between, because we don't care as uh, we um, deputy minister, uh, resident minister, uh, from we can look at the so and within that. I've been sent back at the camp, but because we get challenges with funding, of the past. Today I am here with my team as a result of government support. And I pray may God government continue to get uh, that elite way for the NPAA who will be able to use them judiciously, financial prudence for make we be able to do NPAA then work. Me, like I can tell anybody, I am not in any way distracted from my own job where my president sent me for do. I'm not in any way distracted. Yes, that one day it not go down in life. Everybody go must get in your own interest. But na me, me where they ask who, na me president in interest, na he first at the serve, before I have any other person in interest. Thank so, you very much. call no go down, yeah. call go come in yeah. this night. Um, but uh, just like that. The nearest towns are Kabbalah, 
which is 60 kilometers to the north, and Benugu, which is 40 kilometers to the south. It is located the hills of the Sula Mountains at an altitude of 549 meters, which is 1,801 feet above sea level. Lake Sanfo drains from its southern end, which form the start of the Pampana River, and is fed by seven small streams, with its water's level varying considerably during the year. The lake has a maximum depth of 8 meters, which is 26 feet, and with an area of 8.2 kilometers square, which is 3.2 square millimeter, which is Sierra Leone's largest inland lake. The National Protected Area Authority will continue to monitor and enforce regulations to prevent further degradation of Lake Sanfo and to protect sustainable practices that ensure the long-term well-being of the environment. For Star TV News in Freetown, George Elliott Sam reporting. And now to round up the national news, Khalil Yututange, the chairman for the National Council for Civic Education, NACID, has provided updates on the progress, achievement, as well as challenges NACID faces in implementing its key objectives as an institution. Here's a story. Kalilo Tutangi, the chairman for the National Council for Civic Education and Democracy, provided an update on the progress, achievement, and obstacle encountered by the institution in its mission to educate Sigalianians on their civic rights, duties, and responsibilities. Chairman Tutangi began by highlighting the significant gains made by the National Council for Civic Education and Democracy in raising awareness among citizens about their civic rights and responsibilities. Through various educational campaigns, workshops, and outreach programs, the institution has successfully reached a wild audience, empowering individuals to participate actively in the development and governance of their country. We don't define the niche, of course, all my notes in our day, they teach civics in our school. They yeah. come from that work, we make the curriculum, we make the syllabus, they write the books there. You know, and the government helps us. Over three million dollars now go maybe in books. For me, they will get the books there. Over three million books there even. We name the D, the shape and give the schools there from class one to GSS three. Uh, several schools and they get copies of that, that book there. Yeah. Although others and they we in the some private schools and they we don't them inside the government and government assisted schools bracket will be the local they end up being getting books there. But the bottom line is two periods a week then they teach the subject and our schools and then they take picking and they take examination now on civic education. That's a good thing and that's yeah. what we meet and have unfortunately if we don't lose mm -hmm. out the fact that the president may get the inspiration for Merkel go start and back that's a, a, a very loud boy go down to a uh, credit mm -hmm. and and everybody we they talk about it. Now you go in and say something happened. I say people they know it. Hey, they people they not get civic education. Or oh, now for course civic education, we do that. Yeah. All of that is is an admission an admission uh, on the part of the citizenry that uh, it is important for more people know rights, more competent rights, and they will do responsibilities them yeah. and make them take rules them as citizens they will go play for make the country go before. So I'm very happy that uh, we had uh, that opportunity. Like I say, uh, that's that's a passion. Public service mm -hmm. and, a, and a, a passion for, for some of we and whichever side inside the public service you find yourself you for try as much as possible so that you can make your own contribution and I'm happy that I have had an opportunity for making a contribution in this domain and that's something I'm very passionate yeah. about because over time we see how relevant the whole thing the uh, 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 which we do for instance when there was this uh, this COVID outbreak yeah. people then look up to we. For Michael will go out there and uh, educate citizens yeah. uh, as to what they for do, what they know for do, so that we will minimize the impact of, of the, the COVID, COVID yeah. on society. And we are very happy that uh, we were out there, uh, max up uh, a campaign where we do something very, mm. very big, big stand out yeah. that, that period. Day. Go do your survey, we find out say only about 30% of young people then. We in the target population where one million participants, and they no more be know about the PR, the PR system. system. So what we do, we do animation, we do we, we delete people that we text messages, we do street rallies and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, we bring that element mm -hmm. of them uh, of, of, of that to the people of Shalio, especially the young people that will be the target. Now we're not going to sit down for wait no more until the next election before we do this. What we have done now in our strategic plan, all of those things we know about electoral education, mm -hmm. we know about the democratic process. 
all of that element in, we are now consistently drawing up training programs then so for CSOs, CBOs, uh, uh, community groups, we're involved in this process. Many are all going to know. Chairman Tutange's updates on the gains, successes, and challenges on the National Council for Civic Education and Democracy serve as a reminder of a crucial role that civic education plays in promoting democracy, good governance, and active citizenship in Sierra Leone. Despite the hurdles faced, Chairman Tutange reaffirmed the institution's commitment to its mission and called for continued support and collaboration from all stakeholders to further enlighten civic awareness and participation in the country. For Star TV News in Freetown, George Elliott Sam reporting. Well viewers, that's all we have for you in today's edition of the National News on Star Television on Channel 21. I am Yesi Anest Hallowell. Thank you for watching.